So today I'm gonna to show you guys how to make this 20 ton press, which I was able to make for pretty cheap. And that's assuming that you put about 10,000 pounds on each bolt, which according to my calculations is quite doable using a fairly long torque wrench. So this approach that I took has actually been working really nice, especially if your goal is to make like ultra hard composite plates for ballistic protection or things like that. You can get that larger surface area using these guys. Now, if you're tight on storage space, it's also nice because it's really easy to just stow away for that purpose. So I've definitely seen folks making presses using bottle jacks. The problem with that is you're typically not going to be able to get nearly as much force as you can with one of these. You're not going to get as even of pressure and they're going to be a lot harder to make because you've actually got to make the support go all the way up, support the bottle jack in between, and then have pressure on that third layer. So you really do need one, two, and then three layers to support that. And there's a lot more that can go wrong with that build. And you can even bake these or, you know, put it in the oven. If whatever you're putting in the press needs to heat up, you can totally do that with this plate. Obviously that's not something you'd want to do with an air hydraulic system like a bottle jack. So there's definitely more options there. So you're going to want some heavy steel plates. I'm using half inch steel plates because I wanted to put a lot more pressure. You could go all the way down to maybe a quarter inch, but just know that you're not going to be able to put a whole lot of pressure before deforming that one. You're going to also want some bolts, nuts, and washers. Now the bolts, you will want to be specced to the force that you're going to be applying to those. You're also definitely going to want a drill press to make sure you can drill perfectly straight holes as well. And then you're going to want a drill bit that can cut through steel. So I'm using this cobalt drill bit here. And for the large bolts that you select, you're going to want a smooth shaft for at least the thickness of two of your plates. So if you notice, this is about an inch. So that way I've got a smooth shaft when these are clamped together, because the more that you have exposed to the threads, the more you might actually ding these threads up as you use it with thicker plates. And then you're gonna want a socket that fits your torque wrench or whatever wrench you're using that goes, of course, for the bolts that you're gonna be tightening these down with. And then as far as the design goes, it's pretty intuitive and simple, but I'll still go over the overall process, tips and tricks there, and then we're gonna go into how to spec the parts based on how you want the system to perform. So step one is selecting your steel sheet. Just plain welding stock is fine. You don't have to worry about high hardness or anything like that. That's just gonna make it more difficult to drill through. So again, half inch is plenty for a lot of pressure. The next step is you're gonna wanna make a template so that all of your holes are exact. So just a tenth of a millimeter could be enough to prevent the bolt from passing through the plate below it. You're also gonna wanna calculate how much material you have on either side of the bolt, depending on how thick your main stock is, and also the tension that you're hoping to target with this system. And then in order to get the bolts just right, I did make a 3D printed jig to help guide me where those are gonna go. And you're also gonna wanna look at the plates that you do get to make sure that they're exact. Cause if they're not exact, you're gonna wanna take note of that and then adjust the holes accordingly. Otherwise you might end up with one of the holes on the second plate, not aligning like you thought it might. And then if you do have parts that are different like that, you will of course want to mark one of the sides for each plate so that you know which way to orient them going forwards as you continue the build. And then you will want a drill press here as the bore has to be vertical on all these. Otherwise, like I mentioned, the tolerance just isn't gonna work. The bolts will not go through. And then when drilling steel, focus on pressure over speed. If you go super fast, you might just heat up your bit and end up dulling the bit that you're using. So slow and steady is gonna be a lot better here. You're looking for those deep curls. And I used WD-40 as both my coolant and my lubricant as I was drilling them to ensure that I wasn't getting too hot and I was able to successfully go through and drill all of my holes. And once you do that, you're gonna be good to assemble the plates, ensure the fit is good. Now I did do some deburring of the holes and sanding of the outside of these to make sure all of the little metal coils and splinters were off of this, some light sanding so that I'm not cutting my hands up while using this press. And then going forward, you will want to coat it in oil consistently. This is plain metal stock. It's prone to rust. You want to make sure you have a smooth surface to work on in the future. And the oil is also going to help ensure that epoxies or resins that might overflow or break through some of your protective barriers don't stick to the metal either. Okay, so that's the build process. The next step we're gonna go over is how to actually spec out all of your parts to be able to make a system that's capable of handling the size and pressures that you're hoping to get. So before we do any calculations, you will want to determine how big of a build area you want and then how much total pressure you want to apply to that build surface. So if we're building a standard plate that has four bolts on it, we're gonna be able to divide the total pressure applied by four to be able to calculate the torque needed for each bolt. Now, before you determine those, you do want to determine how much total pressure you want on this plate and typically to to figure that out, you want to figure out how much PSI you want. Because generally, when you're making composites, it's the PSI that matters. So let's say that I had an 8 inch by 8 inch build plate. Well, that's just going to be 64 square inches. And if I wanted, let's say my target was 100 PSI for easy math, well, that would equal to 6,400 pounds. And then you could divide that by four to figure out how much clamp force you want on each bolt. Because clamp force is the force that it applies 
as it pinches what's between the bolt as you tighten that nut down. Some folks might think that, well, if you torque all of them down to 10,000 pounds, you're just at 10,000 pounds. That's not the case. Imagine a bolt as a spring. The more springs you add, well, that tension adds up. And that is because these are actually ductile. It's metal. As you tighten these down, they do actually stretch microscopically the more you tighten these down. Now, going back to the discussion, let's assume that the plates that I've selected, which are 12 inch by 12 inch, I want to impose up to a maximum of 20 tons. So a maximum of 40,000 pounds. Now again, that's gonna be 10,000 pounds per bolt. So you're gonna wanna pick a bolt that can withstand that. These bolts that I've selected at 0.75 inches are rated up to 50,000 pounds, so they're well within this limit. So the next thing that we need to understand is torque. This is a pretty easy thing to calculate. In the empirical system, it's referenced as foot pounds. So let's say I have a two foot wrench and I impose at that end of two feet, 50 pounds of force. That's going to impose a hundred foot pounds because it's basically two times 50. So now that we understand torque, let's go ahead and get into the actual clamping force function. So we could look at torque and say that that is equivalent to the coefficient of friction or nut factor. This is a dimensionless variable here. And then multiplied by the force on the bolt, this is the clamping force, times the nominal diameter of the bolt that we have selected. Now, as far as this coefficient of friction, typically you'll see its values range from 0.15 to about 0.22. So that depends on actually the coating of the bolt, the size of the bolt, lubrication, all of that. So adding nut lube, as silly as it sounds, will actually reduce the coefficient of friction here and get you to this lower number. But let's go ahead and assume something sort of between these two and just say that it's equivalent to 0.18. So torque is equal to 0.18. The force that we want to apply is 10,000 pounds, LBS, and then multiplied by the diameter of the bolt here, which is 0.75 inches, which we can convert to feet by just dividing by 12. So this would be 12 inches there, and then the feet would go up here, those would cancel out. And then once you run these numbers, you're gonna see that the torque is equivalent to about 113 foot-pounds of torque. Now this number is totally doable for like the average male with a two foot long uh, torque wrench because you're gonna be looking at about 60 pounds of force is where you're gonna have to put at the end there. The biggest thing there is you're gonna have to have the plates well mounted so that they're not shifting around. So maybe a vise or something to be able to clamp it down. But that's only if you're trying to max out this particular build. Now, of course, the bolts rating is not the only thing they're gonna have to be careful about. You're also gonna have to be careful about how much material you have from the outside of the bolt. So if I was to design a plate where I had the hole right at the edge, well, that's not gonna be able to take as much force because it's gonna start deforming right here. Granted, the force is gonna be on this side of the bolt, typically given an even load distribution, but nonetheless, that is something you're gonna to wanna to take into account. How much force can the given thickness of steel that you have take? and how big is the washer you're using, along with what's the actual force you're specking this with. So that's something you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind there as well. So if you guys enjoyed this build and you wanna see more educational content from me on my projects and things like that, definitely hit the subscribe button. Um, and if you like this video in particular, leave a like or comment to let me know that. Um, but then as far as my own plate press, I actually never did torque it down to nearly as much pressure as it could take because for the composites I've been doing, it only needs about 100 to 120 PSI and they've been little nine inch by nine inch plates. So it doesn't take very much torque to get there. If you put tons of pressure on those composites, you'll actually get scattering and it's just gonna make a huge mess. You're not gonna get anything worthwhile there. And that's it. So now you've got your own plate press that you can build your own composites in or whatever other experiments you wanna do with it. But nonetheless, thanks guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next update.